Flusarski, we'll get into that, but I just want to say thank you so much for being here. This is a really big deal. Uh, if you would have asked me a few years ago, somebody who's lived in Michigan my whole life would say to the map ever come to Michigan, I'd probably be like, nah, probably not, never. Uh, and then it happened, and now this is incredible and amazing and, and something we'll all remember for all of time. So thanks for being part of that. Um, how many people, first time at State of the Map, raise your hand. Holy moly, everybody, except a few of you. That's amazing. Welcome to State of the Map. It's a great conference. It's probably my favorite conference to go to every single year. This is my third one. Uh, you're going to get a lot of energy to go back and do work uh, and volunteer your time. Become a paid member of State of uh, OpenStreetMap US. It's really important. Helps fund a lot of this great work. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Dexter Slusarski. I work for the city of, city of Detroit, Department of Innovation and Technology. I'm a GIS analyst uh, for the Enterprise GIS team. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, we support applications and data resources uh, across the city. So we have a central city side and we have a public safety side. And on the central city side, there are about 30 different departments uh, who need a wide swath of help with visualization and data analysis. and we typically come in and assist with that um, when necessary. Um, so I, I bring this slide up here because I feel like some of the work that we do at the city of Detroit has a lot of uh, parallels to the work that goes on in, uh, in OpenStreetMap. So this is a, a map on the sixth floor of Coleman A. Young Building, which you'll see if you cruise around the city. Um, and this is alleyway vacations. It's a map that DPW maintains, Department of Public Works, and this is how they know if an alleyway is closed. Uh, there's no digital process at all. They mark the map, and when somebody comes in and says, hey, is the street closed? They say, let me go walk over to this map over here and, and find out for you. They come back and they let you know. Um, it's really no fault of their own. It's just you know not there yet. Uh, this is an example of their key their legend for, for navigating the colors on the map, which sometimes sometimes can be washed out. Um, and this is where they where, this is where they stand in the office. So it's pretty incredible. Uh, it was one of the things that kind of blew me away when I first started working for the city, and I started to think about all the work that you all folks do for, for OpenStreetMap, and a lot of it is taking data in weird spaces and bringing it over to the map and trying to find validation on that. And that's a lot of the work that we do at the city of Detroit we take information from different data, you know, data bases that might not have any inherent connection to our, our data lake or our servers or anything like that, and we kind of create these connections. So really important stuff. Um, we call these foundational data sets, though. That's one thing we're really working on at the city of Detroit, and a lot of that stuff is largely parcels, addresses, things that really drive the work that happens in the city. So we have 30 different departments. One of the weirdest ones is ombudsman. They take all these things that come in for, to them and they're like about different addresses and things. You know, somebody will call and say, hey, I tripped at 16772 Sunderland Road or I had this issue. So then they have to log all those addresses and there's no general connection to an actual master address data set at all throughout the city. So sometimes they'll go to Google, Google Maps or they'll go to OpenStreetMap and click a space and get an address and they'll say, this is great, we have an address, but it actually doesn't connect to any space that we actually <laughs> can find in our data. So it becomes a problem. Um, so what we're here to talk about really though is the Detroit challenge. And the Detroit challenge came up when we started to plan state of the map here in Detroit in April we talked about how we can use state of the map as a vehicle to drive data creation in OpenStreetMap in Detroit and the metro area in the state, frankly. Um, so we came up with this idea of taking all of the tools from the area, and there are a ton of data tools that are provided by a lot of different organizations. Uh, the government culture here is pretty fractured, so we have over 1,800 municipalities in the state of Michigan alone, which is in fact, more government than any other state in the country. Uh, not a bad thing, but just means people have to work together if you want to get things done. Um, so a lot of different organizations have different data portals. We host our own SEMCOG, Southeastern Michigan Council of Governments, which oversees a seven area region, seven county region, has their own. They, build, they actually maintain this amazing building footprints data set. 
that we rely on. Uh, we've actually been gathering street level imagery uh, and some of this information is posted in Mapillary. Some of it is in uh, a, a newer thing, Terrain 360. We've actually got updated aerial imagery, three inch resolution coming pretty soon as well. Uh, we host a lot of this stuff on our public GIS server that you guys can all access and toss into uh, any viewer you want. Um, and then we also have uh, updated LIDAR from USGS uh, that was made available in July. So if you're mapping this weekend and you're looking for resources, they're definitely there. This is one of the best places to go. This is data.detroitmi.gov, and it hosts over, I don't know, like 50, 60, 70 data sets, quite a few. There are over 40 of them that are updated nightly, uh, which is incredible, especially if you look around the country to see how often data gets updated in you know, municipalities' data sets. Sometimes it's once a week, sometimes it's once a month, maybe it's once a year. Our uh, Innovation and Emerging Technologies team actually oversees all of the data portal, and they do an incredible job of making sure all this stuff is up to date and accurate. Um, they're actually here in the audience too, so if you see them this weekend, I don't know if you guys want to raise your hand, talk to them. They're great people. They're very shy right now. Um, Jimmy and Jessica, they're amazing. Uh, talk to them though, because they've really built an amazing infrastructure for us to connect to. Um, and this is some of the examples of the data sets that are available, uh, everything from crime to uh, blight violations and graffiti, uh, and you might say, well, how does that, any of that connect to OpenStreetMap? We're not going to map all the graffiti locations, right? That's weird. Uh, true. Um, so one of the data sets you could utilize, though, is business licenses. So if you're looking to improve point of interest data for Detroit, guess what? We actually license every business in Detroit every single day. So if you're looking for new businesses that are coming through, you can find them right here. Um, all you have to do is go to data.detroitmine.gov and you'll get them. Uh, there's over 22,000 businesses listed in this. It's very detailed, has all different types of categorizations, the type of license it is, if it's being renewed, so if it's an existing business, all that kind of stuff you can definitely uh, differentiate. This is SEMCOG's uh, data portal. This is the building footprint for Detroit. Uh, we've talked for a very long time in the local Detroit community about importing this. We would still love to do that. There are definitely some uh, issues I think that we need to discuss as a community and come together and figure out an overall plan for it, but it is definitely on our to-do list and if you'd like to to be part of that, I invite you to to talk to us this weekend. Um, maybe we can do a, a birds of a feather uh, later. Um, another data set that's very interesting is our demolitions. As Beth mentioned earlier, the city has demolished over 12,000 properties in the last five years, so if you're really looking to spruce up the building footprints file, this is probably where you should start. Uh, because there have, a lot, there have been a lot of footprints removed. Um, the other flip side of that is we also post our building permits online. So if you're looking for new construction, you can find that too. Uh, the other thing we've been really focused on is um, our street level imagery. So this is the coverage in Detroit. As you can see, it's not every street, but it's quite a few streets, a lot of corridors. Uh, the city has actually been driving themselves quite a bit, and you can see up in the excuse me, northwest side of the city, that's my neighborhood, so you can see I've driven all over there quite a bit, quite often. Um, and then we've done downtown, southwest, Belle Isle. Uh, we're gonna be expanding that soon. Uh, the story with that really is pretty simple. Last summer we had somebody from the mayor's office come to us and say, hey, we really wanna get street level imagery. And we are like, great, you should buy us some cameras. So they bought us two GoPros, and we strapped them to these vans. We drove at five miles an hour for like a whole week. Uh, this guy, Bill, who's amazing, uh, he's part of the Detroit Building Authority. He was the main uh, champion. He was the guy on the ground for us every single day going out, making sure the cameras were positionally accurate so that we wouldn't get any weird angles. Um, but Bill was amazing. We did all, uh, we did 12 commercial corridors last year. Uh, and a lot of that has built up to something like this, where we're, we're now testing uh, 360 imagery. So we've gone out and driven a few different neighborhoods um, with a 360 camera. We're gonna be making more of this imagery available. Uh, everything that we shoot though from here on out is pretty much gonna be completely public and available. So right now we're dumping all that information to Mapillary. You can use this in the ID editor uh, and it'll be processed in real time. So you should start to see quite a bit more updates here in the next couple of weeks from us. Um, the other really interesting tool that I just learned about is this thing called Terrain360. So this company went out and actually uh, worked with SEMCOG 
and drove all the canals and uh, trails in the metro area. So you can use this as uh, if you're looking to map trails on uh, uh, OpenStreetMap. This is a really amazing resource for that. And you can see all over uh, in the water, in the canals in Detroit. And if you, this is your first time. How, how many of you have been to Detroit before? OK, great, all of you. Perfect. I don't need to tell you anything, man. Never mind. Um, so uh, the big, big thing with Challenge Detroit or Detroit, the Detroit Challenge for State of the Map this year was how can we take open data and make it useful for, for OSM editing? Uh, so one of the things we thought we could do was take that business license data set. We also took uh, over 20,000 fire marshal permits. So every time a building gets occupied, it has to be inspected by a fire marshal. Uh, we went and grabbed all that information and we mashed it up with our business licenses, we mashed it up with OSM data, and we mashed it up with a bunch of other random POI data sets that we had lying around. Uh, and we created this composite of about 37 locations. Um, Jonah wrote this blog post in July challenging everybody uh, to furiously map Detroit and make it the most well-mapped area on OpenStreetMap. And Mikkel, who's been an amazing uh, champion for us as well, even wrote a really long blog post about uh, MGO and taking his, his experience of taking data that might not be open and looking for APIs and grabbing that and talking to us about it and making sure it gets updated in the data portal. Um, that was a great experience. We also created a, a, a several different tasks on um, the manager. Uh, so you can go here. And you can see we've selected a bunch of different neighborhoods. This is live right now. So while you're here this weekend, make sure you jump on this site. Uh, there'll be a link later in the slides uh, with the URL and all that. Um, but you can grab a neighborhood, claim a neighborhood, claim a zone, go in and actually click the ID editor, drop in, and start checking the data. Um, and you can kind of see this walkthrough of how it works. It's very simple. sections the area off so you can be sure that you're only editing that area and making sure that that's all you're checking against. Um, and you can see our composite data set has also been added um, as part of the vector tile layer feature in the ID editor, which is pretty new and also amazing. Um, we've also got some other data sets in here, uh, our parks and um, another composite data set from, uh, for, for POIs. So, Another thing that we did uh, was host a mapathon at Wayne State a few weeks ago. We had 25 to 30 folks there over the course of three hours learning about OpenStreetMap and how they can contribute to it, which was incredible. Um, here's a photo from the event, riveting. So the big question I have for you all is how can we sustain this momentum? And you know, for us in Detroit where we've got a lot of gaps in our data, how can we do better? How can the city of Detroit be a great champion and move data that we know is valuable to something like OpenStreetMap in a meaningful way so that when folks get on the map, they know there's some authority there at least checking the information. Um, I don't know the answer to this question. Uh, we definitely want to reach out more to the community and, and really sustain that over time. I definitely want to have more conversations with you all this weekend about how to do that, so feel free to come up to me and, and chat. So here's the link, it's just task.openstreetmap.us, contribute, campaign, Detroit. You can check that out. Um, the other thing too that I did last night when I started to think about how, how we can really track our progress is just looking at the actual data on OpenStreetMap right now and how it compares to what we know about areas. So in OpenStreetMap, for the entire state of Michigan, there's 236,000 total buildings. And there's 49,000 buildings in Detroit. So taking just SEMCOG's building footprint file, there's 1.8 million building footprints in the seven county region. So we've got a long way to go to make sure OpenStreetMap reflects the communities that we live in here in, in Michigan. Um, the other thing is the, the point of interest data. Uh, 23,000 total points of interest in the state of Michigan. As I said earlier, when we created that composite, there were about 37,000 just in Detroit alone. So we have a very, very long way to go. Uh, and then you can see we've got only about 1,000 here in, in OSM Detroit. So um, I can open it up for questions. Uh, 
my, my main question for, for you all is what's possible? What can we do this weekend to improve the map? What can we do to finish these tasks? And what can we do in the next couple of weeks and months and years as a community to, to make sure places like Detroit are well mapped and maintained? So I don't know. I, I can I, I can't hear that. Oh, monthly mapathons. Yes. So uh, the question is, have we considered monthly mapathons? We have. Uh, so we actually ran a chapter of Map Time Detroit a few years ago. We did meetings in Northwest Detroit and all over the city. We got a really nice audience. The first few mapathons we did, uh, as soon as folks learned how to use it, they were like, "Cool. What else can we do?" Um, there was kind of like a wall. I think that was the big issue is, and then folks got kind of burnt out. They were like, all right, we're not gonna meet every two months just to digitize. We can do this at home. Like what can we do to be, uh, make this meeting more meaningful? Um, so we definitely wanna get back to that. Now that I think that I work for the city and we have more folks at the city op kind of creating uh, openings for reaching out to the community and hosting city of Detroit sort of official mapathons, I think that could be a lot more meaningful, but I definitely think that's on the horizon for us and something we're really interested in. Other questions? Great, everything's clear. Do you guys have any ideas? Any, Matt, you got a question? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, that's a, this is a very good point. Um, you know, not, not a lot to talk about with this, uh, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, we will have some announcements coming out very soon with what we're doing with imagery. Um, but you can go on Mapillary right now and see all this 360 uh, goodness. Um, let's go ahead and just click over here. It's very hard to see from here, testing eyesight. Uh, plow. So... Yeah, this stuff is pretty great. And I think, you know, having access to it in, in the ID editor is gonna be really meaningful. So um, the real story here with this is that we found out through, uh, you know, something like uh, Motor City Mapping that imagery is really critical to what the city does. We have over 30 departments that rely on images in a wide swath of applications. So you've got folks who are loading up Google Earth. You've got folks who are lo loading up Google Street View. Bing, pretty much anything they can get their hands on to see what the actual environment looks like. So the city is starting to say like, hey, wouldn't it be great if we actually just started to collectively work on this together as a city and unify our imagery? So a few years ago, the assessor paid for uh, a citywide drive of the city of Detroit. We paid a company about a million dollars uh, and then we licensed the imagery from them, which is a really bad deal for us. So as you can imagine, um, it, it restricts our ability to share the information. Um, so a lot of what we're thinking about right now is how we can make sure this imagery is available for everybody, uh, including the citizens in the city, the folks around the country, and uh, the, the departments, and making sure that it's uh, equally distributed across all of those, those sectors. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Matt. So the question is, uh, we, the city of Detroit has a, a local land bank authority who owns 100,000 properties or so roughly across the city, which is about 25% of the land. They have a, a program called, uh, they've got a several programs really. Um, there's some folks from the land bank here uh, right now, uh, say hi to them. Uh, they can definitely answer this question better than I can. Your question is, on the data portal though right now, we're only showing the most recent land bank houses, it, will we show the, the previously sold? So we do have a data set of, of sold properties on there as well. Um, I would definitely, I think you should connect with the innovation and emerging technologies team in the land bank probably to talk a little bit more about what specifically you're looking for that's not there. Um, so you know, that data definitely exists though. Uh, we just, you know, I think need to know more about what your actual, what your request is for or what you're looking for and how we can make that available to you. Okay.